Hi everybody, this is David with Cartoon Fortress. I have a few titles for you today from the good folks over at Mill Creek Entertainment. This is a stack of four Blu-rays, three of which are in the retro VHS packaging, which is really cool, and one which is a standard Amore case. All four titles are slated for release on August 13th, so you can go ahead and pick them up then via Amazon and also directly from Mill Creek Entertainment's website. So let's go ahead and jump right into these. The first title we have is The New, the New Kids. Uh, this is a, we'll call it a horror movie. Um, it's directed by uh, none other than Sean S. Cunningham, who directed the first Friday the 13th film. And it is much... Uh, that same style. You get that same kind of aesthetic. Um, what happens is there's uh, uh, these two kids are teenagers. Uh, their parents, uh, well their, their dad is active military and goes to receive an award and while his parents are gone, uh, well when they're coming back home, uh, they die. So the kids are left uh, to the care of, uh, family and friends. They find themselves in a new town and some of the local kids don't take too kindly to them. So what unravels is a, yeah, m uh, much more of a, uh, kind of horror film and a little bit of a thriller, but it's got a lot of the campiness and, uh, again, kind of general feel and aesthetic of the original Friday the 13th. You can definitely tell they came from the same director. Um, like I said, this came out in 1985 and, uh, runtime is about an hour and 30 minutes, I believe. Uh, according to the back of the slipcover here, yes, it is one hour and 30 minutes. Um, as far as the transfer, I found this to be very serviceable in terms of a Blu-ray transfer that you'll find on an older title. Uh, nothing to complain about. Um, a few spots of of uh, kind of graininess, aged video, um, and that and that's really going to be the theme kind of in these Blu-rays. Is the the transfers are nothing to uh, go nuts about, but they're they're most definitely. Uh, serviceable. Um, these discs also, uh, I think the most we get out of any of the four of these movies is a uh, trailer and nothing else to speak of. So very bare bones release. However, I do really like the retro VHS packaging that Mill Creek has been doing. It's really fun. Um, so you can see here, you have that nice aged look the uh, VHS tape with the stickers and then on the back just the same thing you'd find on the back of a VHS tape including the obviously the actual tape itself a couple of screenshots and then a brief synopsis of the film um, and this is rated R in widescreen and comes to us from Columbia Pictures so the spine there is really fun and then here you have kind of the standard uh, spine, and I should mention as well the the uh, cast in this in this movie is kind of fun. You have uh, Lori Laughlin, of course, uh, Becky Aunt Becky from Full House, and then the the great James Spader is in here as well as one of the main uh, antagonists or the main antagonist, I should say. Um, he's part of the gang of kids that. Uh, aren't too nice to the to the new kids so anyways yeah so this is new kids from 1985 and then let me just really quickly show you so here's the cover that you get inside here you can see from the director of Friday the 13th and then you get the disc um, which has the artwork from the cover so that Matches nicely, get that, again, kind of very 80s look there. So 
no complaints from me. Um, it was an enjoyable movie and one that I will definitely go back to and and watch again. So, and I believe all these titles are under ten dollars. I believe uh, right around eight ninety nine a piece. So very very affordable. And that's one thing I love about Mill Creek is they're putting out some really quality content and and uh, at a at a really affordable price. So. I uh, can't go wrong there. All right, the second film that we have here is White Line Fever from 1975, directed by Jonathan Kaplan, uh, and stars. Uh, there, there's a few people in here that you'll recognize if you've watched really any amount of movies. You'll you'll notice some people in here, um, especially the great Slim Pickens. Uh, he plays a character by the name of Dwayne. Um, and also, uh, Jan Michael Vincent, I personally noticed him right away, this, uh, the main character. He's from an old Disney movie called, uh, The World's Greatest Athlete, and, uh, kind of a, a silly old Disney title. Um, but I, I noticed him right away, I recognized him right away. And then you have kind of a, um... Definitely a 1970s feel to this uh, to this film. Um, so essentially, what happens is uh, so Carol Jo Hummer is our main character, played by Jan Michael Vincent, and he decides to uh, become a trucker, kind of go into business for himself a little bit, and he is pressured into transporting material uh, that is not exactly legal. <laughs> um, and he fights the system, says he won't do it, and uh, from there it's all downhill for him. Um, and he has a wife, and they're newlyweds trying to start a new life for themselves together, and and yeah, so this is kind of a fighting the system and, and, uh, yeah, has to, has to fight for his and his wife's, uh, life. Um, uh, so this one plays out much more of a, as much more of a thriller, not as much of a horror film like the new kids, but, um, really enjoyable 1970s film. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... As you can see here, this is a uh, rated PG, which I definitely felt in a few parts it probably pushed the envelope a bit on that rating, but of course we didn't have the PG-13 rating at the time this was released. So um, again, we have the retro VHS packaging here um, with the uh, stickers and here's the uh, synopsis and screenshots here. I really like both uh, versions of the artwork here. Um, so this is some really cool, definitely 70s filling right there. And then on the inside, disc art matches kind of the, the cover here. So, And I don't know if we mentioned the runtime here, also one hour and 30 minutes. Um, so that is White Line Fever. Again, uh, definitely one that I would come back to. This and The New Kids were uh, the two that I really took to in this in this pile. So um, one that I'll be re revisiting uh, off and on. All right. Next, we have uh, Steve Martin and Daryl Hannah in Roxanne from 1987, uh, directed by, and I'm going to, probably butcher his name, Fred uh, Shepsi, something like that. Um, and this is a, we'll call it a romantic comedy. I, I think that's probably the genre or subgenre that best fits the description of this one. Um, not going to lie, didn't like this one very much. <laughs> um, really kind of strange, strange movie. Um yeah, it's uh, Steve Martin plays a character who 
uh, has a, a very noticeable uh, physical flaw, and that is his nose. He has a very, very large nose. And Daryl Hannah, who plays the uh, title character of Roxanne, um, is new in town, or she's she's staying, I think, for a limited amount of time. And he uh, takes to her. And, of course, feels very insecure because of his outward appearance. And uh, for some reason... So he uh, he's chief of a... Um, uh, or captain, whatever, of a, f a fire department and in the local town there. And this is in the Pacific Northwest. I can't remember exactly uh, exactly where, but yeah, it's like Pacific Northwest. And um, uh, yeah, so he runs a firehouse and uh, one of the other new in town fireman uh, also takes to Roxanne, she takes to him, and in the meantime, uh, Steve Martin's character, and I'm not recalling his <laughs> his name at the moment, uh, his character's kind of left to uh, the back burner, and actually he is writing love letters to Roxanne uh, for uh, this other guy that that really likes her so so she is enjoying the words from his letters and everything thinking that it's this other guy and and uh yeah no spoilers but that's kind of the the general premise or setup and for some reason one of the parts that I really didn't understand or didn't didn't really dig was for some reason he has kind of low level not superpowers but just like ultra strength and he can uh he, he pulls off these gymnastics moves and it's <laughs> it's really kind of strange um anyways yeah so it, it's kind of a uh lighthearted in a lot of places um again kind of romantic comedy but nothing nothing that i really took to so i don't know that i'll be uh really ever revisiting this one, but, but that's not to say that if you don't, you know, it, it, that if you like that type of genre that you wouldn't enjoy this. So let's take a look at the packaging here. Um, so this is our third and final retro VHS style packaging there. And here's the back, um, a comic masterpiece by Siskel and Ebert. That's the review, which kind of surprises me not to be too honest, but yeah, just really, really, really did not like it. Um, all right. So then the case inside there, you see his huge schnoz looking up at Roxanne and then there's the disc art. So fairly plain on that one, but yeah, kind of matches the style there. And not too much to s else to say about that one. This uh, comes in at a running time of one hour and 47 minutes. All right, and our final uh, title here is one I didn't even remember seeing anything about this coming out. Um, but this is the, the great Marlon Brando in one of his obviously lesser known titles called The Ugly... American. Uh, this was released in 1963 and was directed by George England. And uh, basically this is a, to kind of, again, put this one into a genre, this is, um, we'll call it a political thriller, uh, political action movie. Um, so this one's just in a standard Amore case. Um, and as you can see the tagline here, in a time of turmoil, one man must make a stand. So this is, uh, about a character who, um, well, his Marlon Brando p plays an ambassador, um, Harrison Carter McWhite, and he, 
uh, becomes the ambassador of Sarkhan, and it's a country in Southeast Asia um, where there's basically a civil war uh, brewing, and he's uh, friends with basically the main leader there in, their, in, the, in that country, and uh, things do not go according to plan when he goes out to try and uh, calm the, the storm a little bit, as it were. Um, yeah, so it's in, the cover here is in black and white, it actually is in color, um, comes in at a running time of an even two hours. Um, I found it, uh, not that I have an issue with this, because there's, there, there's lots of films that I love that would be, uh, categorized as, as a, being a slower pace, but, um, it, it definitely has a slower pace. There's some scenes of action, um, kind of war, uh, violence. Um, and I would think, especially at this time that there were some scenes that, that may have been, uh, for sure a little bit shocking. Um, but yeah, a uh, fairly decent film. Um, not, not one, you know, again, just like Roxanne. I, I liked this more than I did Roxanne for sure, but not one that I'd be in a hurry to get back to. And I believe this is the title that has the film trailer as the only extra feature that's offered. So, and that's again, the only extra feature that's offered in, in any of these. Um, and then, uh, subtitles are also optional on these titles. Um, so here's the cover on this, as you've seen, and the discard. So I do like also that, that, uh, Mill Creek does discard. I mean, they seem to be pretty consistent with that. There's nothing that looks too terribly plain. So I always enjoy that as I know most collectors do. So that also comes out. Uh, so all four of these come out on August 13th. And yeah, all four very affordable titles. I would recommend uh, The New Kids and White Line Fever. Those get my personal recommendation. Roxanne, I would take a hard pass on. And The Ugly American, if you're into political thrillers, uh, I would say is, is, is worth a view. Um, anyways, uh, this is David with Cartoon Fortress. Let me know in the comments below if you'll be picking any of these up or uh, what your thoughts are on these films, if you've seen any of them or what you're what your general thoughts are. Anyways, uh, have a great day and I'll be back with another video soon.